Hi there, it's me Tina Thomas and I have Richa with me. So our next role play is about a small boy who has fallen down from a staircase, yes. right? Yes. And his mother is extremely worried. She doesn't know what to do. And on top of that, the emergency department is crowded with people and there is staff shortage. You know, when we have staff shortage, what happens, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is a scenario. Yes. And, and the treatment has been delayed as well. That's yes. a highlight. Here. Highlight <laughs> over there. <laughs> yes. And uh, Richa is going to take the role as nurse and I am going to take the role as the parent. Okay. So let's get started. All Ready? Right. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Richa. I'm one of the registered nurses working in this emergency department. How may I address you? Oh, nurse, you can call me Maria. All right, Maria. I can see that you're a little bit upset and worried, and I can also see your son along with you. Could you tell me how can I help you? Oh, nurse, we've been waiting here for 30 minutes, and this is the time you're coming and asking us this. I'm really sorry to hear that. I apologize for the delay because, you know, we are having a very rushed day today, mm -hmm. uh, and we are running out of staff as well. We don't have enough staff to take after mm -hmm. all, look after after all the uh, patients we are getting today mm -hmm. and I do, I do understand that it's not a justification for the rough time you had to go through and I can see that your son is not keeping well seems yes. like there is something wrong with his you know his hands right yes nurse. all he right fell down from the stairs and he's been having severe pain and he was crying here mm -hmm. and I don't bother whether you guys have sharp shortage or whether it is a busy day today you have to attend the patients based on their priority nurse see mm -hmm. my son over here he's a small boy you can you can see him crying too right but this is totally you know I'm not able to accept this fact itself what is this I perfectly understand where you're coming from and mm -hmm. if I were I would also react the same way mm -hmm. but Maria please try to understand that mm -hmm. as I mentioned earlier this is not a justification mm -hmm. for the rough experience you had from our end mm -hmm. but I ensure you that this will not happen again and mm -hmm. I will personally look after your son okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so for in order to help him in a better case I need to know what exactly happened to him okay so today morning mm -hmm. uh, I was in the uh, hall okay. and I asked my son what is he doing and I called out okay. and he was playing with his cars and I think accidentally one of his car dropped down from the stairs and he slipped and okay. he fell down I think around three to four ste steps he fell down and um, you know his hands are broken oh, all right. I feel and it's swollen there it's could swollen. you please look into his hand and Definitely. tell me what's happening with my son he's Absolutely. my only son all right, I can't okay. see him going through this pain I perfectly understand that please be relaxed Murray okay no. you have reached right place and we will look into mm -hmm. it okay so uh, with your permission can I check his vitals uh, do you really need to do all those things right now? Yes, because we need to make sure that he is stabilized before the doctor comes so uh, that we can start with the treatment so immediately. You, okay, you do it fast, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, because we need to run some tests like we need to have an x-ray and other things to be checked as well. Whether We need to make sure whether he has a fracture or not, okay? okay. Or is it just a sprain or things like that Oh, too, so that okay? means it's going to take a longer time. Uh, well, it won't take much longer because the doctor is on the way and he's currently attending to a critical patient, oh okay? Oh my, what so you're saying, nurse, I wait for half an hour here mm -hmm. just to talk to you now you're telling me to wait for the doctor for again another half an hour no I won't accept all these things I think I can go and see another hospital or get a better medical attention right see I understand this is overwhelming for you at the mm -hmm. moment but please try to understand that if you go to another hospital right now you'll have to start from the basics so it will be more mm -hmm. time consuming so right now we just need to check his vitals and mm -hmm. I can give him the comfort position so that he will not feel the pain okay, mm -hmm. okay. and the doctor will be here very soon and I'll ensure that your case will be a priority for us mm -hmm. and we will do everything necessary to make your son feel better okay mm -hmm. so okay. you do not need to worry about it all right okay. so uh, I have checked the vitals of your son and it is stabilized right now he's having some bruises here and there and he's in a shock mm -hmm. from the falling okay of from the course, fall nurse, he will yeah. be in a shock see this is um, this is the first time he's facing something like mm -hmm. this and uh, please tell me what treatment can you do for this uh, so at the moment as I mentioned that we need to keep him under observation mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. for almost 24 hours because the doctor will come and he will do the necessary arrangements mm -hmm. for that and uh, for further information I as I mentioned we need to do some tests we need to make sure that he's not having any broken limbs or any you know arms or legs mm -hmm. as well okay so uh, for the time being he can be here and we will observe him for the next few hours and uh, we will make sure that he is not having any pain and we will take care of him okay but how long will the doctor come like it will only take another 15 minutes of time 15 minutes so till 15 minutes my son has to bear the pain do not worry about it. That's why I mentioned that I will provide a comfortable position for him so that he mm -hmm. will ease his pain. Mm -hmm. okay. And I can give
gave him a painkiller as well. So okay. in case if it is too un unbearable for him, I can provide a painkiller as well. Fine. Okay. Please do something fast, nurse, because uh, you know I can't see him tolerating more pain like this. Like you know he's been going on with this pain from morning, and we've been waiting here. And now again the doctor is going to take another 15 minutes to come. See, I I I'm, I don't want to wait, but still now as you said, now I don't have any other way. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm just waiting here. Please get things started off right away. Definitely. And do the necessary arrangements. As I mentioned earlier, you will be a priority case, mm -hmm. and I will do everything possible to do uh, mm -hmm. you know make the make sure that your son is all right. Okay. And I hope my son will be better. Perfectly. Do not worry mm -hmm. about it. All okay. right. So is there anything else you want to ask me at the moment? Oh no, I just hope the doctor comes and sees my son. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Don't worry. Uh, so please be here, Maria. I will uh, assist you shortly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, <laughs> this was a reluctant case. Yes. The thing was, the mother is totally angry because the emergency department is crowded, there's staff shortage, mm -hmm. and nobody was attending to her son. Yes. Right? And on top of that, the doctor is also getting delayed. Mm -hmm. So, totally the delay thing. Yes. So, yeah. we are asking her to wait for a yeah. little more longer. Yeah. So already the patient is reluctant, patient doesn't, like, you know, she's totally angry by mm -hmm. all the situation and again calming her and making her understand that the doctor will take some more time. So in these type of role plays, there are a lot of ways how you can, you know, hit it on, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, that's how you right. Can talk to the again, patient. time is also another major concern. Major here. concern. Because the patient is not going to accept to it. They are not mm -hmm. going to get convinced. We are going to keep on making them understand. You're going to persuade them. You're right? Yes, that's so right. So I think all these things Richard will be explaining to you in the feedback session and you will be getting a better idea on how to do that, right? Absolutely. Okay, and we'll see you in the next role play. Till Keep then. watching. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello everyone, I'm Richard Caroline, an IT trainer from IALT and welcome to the feedback session where we pick out the keywords and see the easiest way to create sentences for your IT role plays. So just now we saw a case where you're talking to a very disturbed mother because she brought her son because he had a fall and as a result of that he might have a fracture and he's in severe pain, he's crying and he uh, she brought uh, him to the emergency department. But what happened there is because of our busy schedule and a staff shortage we couldn't pay attention to this uh, particular boy so now the nurse is approaching and the mother is really angry he, she is furious about what happened and let's see how we can tackle her okay or how we can actually convince her and move forward with the son's treatment so let's uh, start with the task number one where it says address the concern and apologize for the delay so that's your task number one so again we can have two segments here where the first part is where you're addressing the patient's concern and then the second part is where you're apologizing for the delay so these are the two uh, keywords you have in task number one the first one concern the second one, apologize, okay? So let's see how we're going to do this, all right? So you can start by saying, good morning, my name is Richa. I'm one of the registered nurses working in this emergency department. You seem to be really upset. Is everything all right? The basic introduction pattern. And after that, she's you know, shouting at you, like for being delayed, uh, for the delay in the entire treatment procedure. So the, she's really angry at you and she's shouting. So you're going to apologize for the delay. Hmm? So you can start by saying, I'm really sorry for the delay, okay? That is the reason, that is the apologizing part. As a continuation of that, you can do task number two because in task number two, you're saying politely explain that the emergency department is very busy today, accident cases, staff shortage. So in the previous conversation, you were apologizing. So as a continuation of that, you can do task number two hmm? because here the keyword is um, uh, the reason the emergency department is busy that is what you have to stress so that is the keyword here okay so as a continuation from task number one you're going like uh, the reason why we couldn't attend your son on time is because emergency department is very busy today we have a lot of accident cases reporting as well as we don't have enough staff to take care of those but 
do not stop there you say but there because the patient or the bystander won't be very happy to hear this from you okay because they might ask a question like don't you have enough staff i'm also paying money here so you're not taking care of it so there is partiality and you're not giving priority so they might uh, come out with a lot of uh, you know firebacks so to avoid all those what you can do is that you can use a but after the explanation okay you can explain that these are the reasons why the treatment was delayed but I know this is not an explanation or justification for your rough experience. I will ensure that this will not happen again. Okay, and you can say I will personally take care of your son. So could you please tell me and then you can continue with it. Okay, so that is how you can start and end task number two. So let's say task number three. Inform the parent you will check the vitals and do the necessary treatment. So again, this is a continuation of task number two, okay? So in task number two, you entered the conversation by saying, I will take care, I will personally take care of your son, okay? And then you can continue by saying uh, the task number three where the keywords would be you're checking the vitals and uh, yeah, checking the vitals, that would be a keyword there, okay? So how can you do that? I will, I will personally take care of your son, don't worry. Please let me check the vitals for your son to do the necessary treatments. That is your task number three. Okay, task number four, when the parent asks for the doctor, inform that the doctor is busy with critically ill patient. What are the keywords here? When the parent asks for the doctor, right? So the keyword would be doctor, busy, critical, Ill, critically ill patient. Okay, so let's see how we are going to club this information into a simple task explanation. So you can say that, you uh, know, as a mother, I understand that you're really worried about your son, but please don't be worried. Uh, the doctor is busy at the moment. He is attending to a critically ill patient. Meanwhile, I will take care of your son. So could you please cooperate with me? That is how you can finish that particular task. Okay, so let's see task number five. Try to convince the angry patient to take the vitals and inform him or her that you will provide the adequate care, bruises, shock from falling down, etc. Okay, so here, what are the keywords? Here, you are trying to convince the parent to take the vitals, okay, because maybe the parent is not letting you take the vitals, so you can convince him to do that. And then you are telling that you will provide adequate, adequate care. Okay, so the first keyword will be convinced to check the vitals. Second one would be adequate care. Okay, and whatever information is given in the brackets can be covered. So let's see uh, how to make a sentence here. So you can say, I understand that you're really worried and really angry at the moment, but uh, the doctor will uh, take some time to come here. So meantime, uh, I will take care of your son so that if you let me check his vitals, I can uh, make sure that he is feeling stable right now. Okay. And after taking the permission, you can say that. So I checked his vitals. He is stable right now. Other than bruises and the shock from falling, he is all right. Okay. So that is how you can finish task number five. So let's see task number six. Reassure the parent that the son will be all right. Need observation for 24 hours. Okay, so here the keyword would be reassure son will be all right 24 hours. Okay, so let's see how we can make a sentence here. So you can start by saying I reassure you that your son is going to be perfectly all right. However, we need to observe him for another 24 hours to make sure that he doesn't have any further complications because he's having a shock from the fall. So we need to make sure that he's all right. So that is the reason why you have to stay back in the hospital for the next 24 hours. Okay, so that is how you're going to finish it. So as the end of this particular role play, you can take a permission. So is it all right with you? Okay, or you can say the doctor will be here soon. Meantime, if you have any queries, you can check with me. Okay, so once, once you saw this video, like where I did the part of the nurse by doing this role, by, by doing this role play, you might have seen I included some extra details where that we need to check, uh, take the x-ray to make sure whether he has any fracture or not because he actually had a fall, right? So to substitute that, I actually added those information there. Mm -hmm. So you can actually go beyond the information given in the cue card if you have enough time. If you feel like that, you might cover all the information within the time. And if you have some extra time there, you can definitely go for extra explanations like I did in the role play. Okay. So you can refer that again and let us know your feedback in the comment section. I will see you guys next time with another video. Take care. IILT. It's my cup of tea.